okay, 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 okay. So when I prepared for the 2021 draft with Cade, Jalen Green, and Scotty and Mobley, so I watched this one video about this one guy I don't even know, and I saw that it had him comparing Jalen Green to Michael Jordan, and I took that shit and I ran with that. Like, I posted on every single thing. I'm like, yo, look at his, like, off one leg athleticism that Jalen Green has, like, through traffic athleticism, like, look at the Jordan-esque moves he was doing. So I was high on Jalen Green before the draft even started. And, like, right now, I'm really polarized on how I feel about Jalen Green. Like, honestly, I I don't like the Rockets. Like, I, I mean, I like the Rockets, like the players that they have. But I don't like Steven Silas as the coach. Um, I don't like the offensive schemes that, they, that they've they been running in the beginning of the season. Like, lately, I think it's been better. Like, they actually look like a basketball team lately. But early in the season, they were looking like trash. But let me get back on the Jalen Green show, which is what I think that this AAU tournament ball shit that they be running is. So with Jalen Green, like, I see the potential. Like, I heavily see the potential. So you have a 6'6 guy, like, with a 40-inch vert, you know, great shot creator. Shot creator, 40-inch vert. You know, Jordan. You got Jordan. You got baby Jordan. You got skinny Jordan. Motherfucker, you ask any Houston Rockets fans, you got, you know, the reincarnation of Jordan, even though the motherfucker ain't even dead. But, like, I'm trying to see what can he do to really help himself be more efficient. Honestly, he has a bag. He has the hops. He, I mean, he doesn't have the frame for defense yet. I mean, he's kind of a liability on defense, but also his frame is kind of slight. But if I'll be honest with you, I think it's that he just needs a point guard. Like, if I'm being honest with you, I think Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. shouldn't be on the same team with each other because they play too similar. And by too similar, I mean they don't play, like, the exact same way, but they're just both guys who needs the ball in their hands to make plays. And I don't see Kevin Porter Jr. as that playmaker. Like, I feel like they should have been in a running for a Mike Conley type player. You get the ball out of Jalen Green's hand and you make the game easier for him. Like, you give him open looks. I think even Anthony Edwards said he has a problem with taking these tough-ass step-back shots. Like, God, man, you, you don't need to be taking these goofy-ass shots, bro. Like, come on. Like, we get you can make those tough shots, but make the tough shots when you have to take the tough shots. Like, you don't have to, like, force your to to – Force yourself to make these tough shots. After watching the Pelicans game, I felt like he had a decent game just for the mere fact that he was getting open looks. Like, I don't know. Jabari wasn't playing that good until then. You know, we, we played these motherfuckers again today. I want, my, I, want, I want my ones again. But Jabari wasn't playing that good. You know, he hit the game winner at the end. Okay, okay. Um, but, like, I saw Jalen Green. And, yes, he's a turnover machine called Jalen Green. He had, like, four turnovers in the game. But, I mean, what, I mean, what did we expect? I mean, when you have the ball in your hand that much and you're – being expected to make all these plays and shit like that, you're going to turn the ball over, especially when you're not a playmaker. Like, Jalen Green is not a playmaker. Like, if I'm being honest with you, dog, they're talking, they're comparing him to James Harden. The difference between him and James Harden is that, okay, he's more athletic, uh, he has higher potential, and offensively, besides the playmaking, because he will never be as good as a playmaker as James Harden. Because I just don't see it. And there's no problem with that. I mean, I, there's just no problem with not being a playmaker. I mean, I'm not asking him to be the offensive maestro, and have everything in this bag, especially in what year three? What we? Yeah, year what year? Yeah, year three. I'm guessing, or year two. I'm confused right now. I, anyways, I don't think he's just he's a playmaker. I mean, he's a two guard. I mean, there's a two guard per position. I don't even think he's a combo guard. I just think he's a natural two guard, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially if he's able to fill out his frame, start playing better defense. I mean, he he really has the potential to be a, a scoring two guard. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like, Zach Levine's bread and butter is being a scoring two guard. Donovan Mitchell. I mean, he has playmaker. Like, he's a good playmaker, Donovan Mitchell is. But, uh, I mean, people are calling him an overzealous, like a like a over-exaggerated Jordan Clarkson. I ain't going to go that far. But, yeah, he's a, he's a bucket getter. And there's nothing wrong with being a pure bucket getter as long as you surround him with all right, what they should do. If I'm building... All right, listen, if I'm building the, the, the 2029 Rockets for a title, listen, I'm having Jalen Green as my centerpiece. I'm giving him a Lonzo Ball-type playmaker, CP3-type player, somebody who don't need the ball in their hand but who can play defense and pass. Who knows, Lonzo Ball might be recovered from all the injuries right there and you can just get broke. I'm keeping Sengun because Sengun is like Ennis Cantor. If Ennis Cantor was as good as Ennis Cantor thought he was, but forget, I see the potential in Sengun. 
He's like Ennis. All right, Ennis Cantor was kind of I right when he was playing NBA basketball. Like I don't see like defensively. I'm was why I'm really saying that because defensively, I don't. Sin Goon, he's a smart defender, but he's not a good defender. Kind of Jokic like, uh, passing also kind of Jokic like, which is why I said he's in his Cantor esque. I don't want to give him Jokic yet because calling him Jokic right now is kind of crazy. Offensively, he got it. Offensively, Sin Goon is there. He got the he got the Hakeem Dream Shake. You know the he got the cream shake passing. Like he he know what he's doing. He know what he's doing. So I'm keeping Sin Goon because his development showing me that he's gonna be a a, a top tier big in the league. At least comparable to like the like DeAndre Aiden and Jaron Jackson Jr. Like maybe not defensive wise, but you know offensively wise, I think you can keep up with him. What next? What I'm next doing is I'm trying to find a Draymond dog. I mean, I know it's gonna be hard, but I gotta find me a defensive wing who like maybe a Nasir Little or, or uh, Matisse Thybul, somebody who literally only job is just to play defense and pass the ball around. You know, just running the like like playing the offense and just play defense. Because when you have a guy like Jalen Green, you want to surround him with as much. If you want him to utilize him the best thing, you want to surround him with three-point shooting. Okay. But you want to surround him with defense because if he never gets to that top-tier defensive, like, thing that – defensive tier that you want him to be, I mean, you – I mean, you're cooked. I mean, you can't. I mean, it's okay. Not everyone's going to be a lockdown Gary Payton defender. But, I mean, he's going to be comparable at least when he gets to, like, the later years of his career because you kind of got to be comparable if you want to be on the NBA team. So you still want defenders around him. Do what you did with James Harden. Literally, do what you did with James Harden. Give him a like CP3 type player. Give him some three and D like a PJ Tucker, Draymond Green type three and D wing. That's all you need: three and D wings, three and D wings, and a decent center. Because right now, I think he already has a decent center to develop with with uh, Sin Goon. I mean, people keep on saying pass Sin Goon and make him the lead playmaker, but playing outside in. I mean, yeah, out, no, inside out don't really work as good as it used to do back in the 90s. That's all I'm going to say. So maybe you can't really play outside in. I mean, inside out, fuck. Outside in. Inside out, damn. You know what I'm trying to say. Inside out. You can't really play inside out as much as you want to. I mean, you can when you have a generational center like, you know, fucking Joel Embiid and, you know, Jokic and all that stuff because they're your best player on your team. But there's still a chance that Jalen Green is the best player on this team on certain nights. That motherfucker plays like he's the best player on the team. And you already have another three. All right, listen, you have a three and D wing with Jabari. Okay, good job on drafting Jabari, but also bad job because there was, mm, it, it depends. It's really his handle. He doesn't get enough time to utilize his handle, and that's the only problem. If you had a playmaker, if you had a Mike Conley or something like that to just share the ball and give everybody fair chances with the ball – Without it being dominated with Kevin Porter Jr. taking a bunch of goofy ass shots or Jalen Green taking a bunch of goofy ass shots and everybody taking a bunch of goofy ass shots and this being the fucking cornball team, the 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 2023 uh, Houston Rockets cream team, like the, the, it's the offense is ass. In recent recent days, recent couple of days, they've been on a little winning streak and it's been looking good, but overall it's been ass. So you know what? Get Jalen Green a playmaker and get Kevin Porter Jr. as a six man off the bench. There's nothing wrong with being a six man off the bench. I think that's what he should have been as soon as he came into the NBA. A six man off the bench when he was with the Cavs. Six man off the bench. That's what he is. What I'm trying to get to is that get this man a playmaker. I think Jalen Green can be an all star. And I think that's it, honestly. I don't see anything else. Just I feel I just really want to. I'm really making this video. I just want to know what Houston Rockets fans think of him. Because I have my gauge on him, and other people might have their gauge on him, but if you're a Rockets fan out there, I want to know your gauge of him. This was in the, fuck it, I'm out.